when it comes to the cannon, you need to have a way to adjust the barrel. And you can adjust your elevation where the barrel points up, so you do a lobbing shot, or the nose more down, so you're shooting straight out. The way some people do it is with a wedge, and a wedge works perfect, but I wanted to do a little something different, or I wanted to do it more like they do on the real cannons, is probably the more correct thing to say. And I had some material set aside to do this, and I think the material grew legs and walked out of the shop because I've searched high and low and I can't find it. Now I know next week when I'm uh, cleaning up the shop, putting everything, all the tools and everything away, dusting everything off, it will walk back in here with its legs and plop itself down somewhere, but I'm on a time frame. I've got to get this done. So I had to do the fall back and punt. And here's what I came up with. I just happen to have some brass bolts. Now this brass bolt isn't long enough to make a jack out of, and the simple fact is, you just turn it and it lifts up and down and lifts the back of the barrel up or down. Not complicated. And my thought was to take this little piece of free machining brass slug that I just happened to have from God knows where, drill a hole and thread it with a couple of holes to hold it down to the surface and as I screwed this down or up it would adjust the back of the barrel likewise. Trouble being this bolt isn't long enough. So here's what I've come up with. It's not my number one choice to do this, but this is fall back and punt. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this brass bolt. I took another one just like it and I cut the head off the bolt. I'm gonna silicon bronze these two together. And the way I'm gonna do it is inside this piece of angle, I'm gonna set them inside there. And that keeps the two pieces straight on two planes so that we still have a, call it straight shaft, although I'm sure it will have a little bit of wobble in it. It'll probably only be in the thousandths range. The other thing I'm gonna have to do is turn this bolt so that hopefully the thread pitches where one thread starts and another one ends line up. Because after I'm done silicon bronze in this, I'll turn it to diameter on the lathe over there and then I have a die that's the correct size and very carefully I'm gonna try to thread over the silicon bronze and hopefully make one bolt. Now I know I'm gonna get comments. That ain't the right way to do it. The place where I buy the material for me is over three hours away from here. I just don't have the time to make it by my deadline to get this, this uh, cannon shipped to John Saunders up in Ohio. I need a couple of days trucking time to get it up there. So I've got to get this done. So the threads are a little bit sharp right there, which means we, we probably took a little bit off. Um, and we can see that we did. But where we joined them together, we have a nice thread. I got a little bit of a, a booger right there and a little bit right there, and that's just from the arc. I didn't do a good enough job making sure that I filled a little overfill on it, but that's okay. I'm super happy with that overall. We'll uh, scotch bright it a little bit, clean it up. Thinking back about it, what could I do different if I was in this situation again, which I try to do a lot, is I could take in a thread pitch gauge and I probably could have spanned the gap. And that should have at least had the thread in or out enough so that it would have caught the next revolution and not, not skim the threads. But really I did it by eye and you know, overall it's pretty impressive. And it's straight, that's what I can't get over is how straight that came out. Now that we've got this done, we can put this in the lathe. We're gonna turn a crown on this. We'll get a round shape on it first, and then we'll probably turn the crown by hand. All right, so first off we took the bolt and we turned the head round and then we cut like a mushroom shape on the end of it. Uh, it came out real nice. The threads are a little bit sharp. Might run a little emery paper over them to smooth them up there. We'll see how it fits when we cut this base piece. We took that slug of brass and drilled a hole in the middle. This is the arbor that I had turned when I made my kids their Christmas presents this past year. Uh, we'll put a link up here in the description box. You can uh, go watch that video if you're interested. It's a whole series on making some little steam powered generators. So I had this arbor, it was already set to half inch. So I just drilled the whole half inch. We'll need to overbore it for this threads when we're done but we're gonna go over to the lathe right now. We're gonna put some shape in this and make it look nice. We're working on our jack screw. This is how it came out. Pretty good overall. Pretty pleased considering what we had to work with. This is the base plate that I made out of that piece of free machining brass. And it's just threaded like this. And so what's gonna happen is I got a shoulder here. This jacks the cannon barrel up and down. 
and that gives us our elevation to fire the cannon. So what I need to do is I'm going to find center on this and I've already marked a, a position where this jack will go up underneath here. We'll drill a hole here with a Forstner bit all the way through. We'll put a couple of small wood screws in it like this. Okay, let's go for broke. Let's put this heavy monster of a cannon barrel on here and see how it works. I like it, it's nice and easy to turn. Well folks, there you go. You got an uncle and his name is Bob. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.